What's good, Philadelphia? Let's try that again. What's good, Philadelphia? My name is Alicia Garza, and I believe that black people deserve to be powerful in every aspect of our lives, and politics should be no exception. In 2018, I launched a new organization called the Black Futures Lab, which works to make black communities powerful in politics. You see, I've been an organizer for nearly 20 years, first with black communities in East and West Oakland in California. Yeah, represent Oakland. <laughs> then for 10 years with black communities in Bayview Hunters Point, in the southeast section of San Francisco, taking on one of the largest developers in the nation. Six years ago this week, I helped to create the Black Lives Matter Global Network, which began as a hashtag and a series of pages on social media sites, and then grew into a network with nearly 40 chapters in four countries. I've helped to create a program called We Dream in Black, the first organizing program at the National Domestic Workers Alliance that is focused specifically on black domestic workers coming together across the diaspora to change the industry that cares for the people that we care for the most. We Dream in Black is now organizing black domestic workers in four states across the nation, including North Carolina, Georgia, New York, and Washington State. I feel good about these things. And I've spent nearly 20 years building power with black communities all over the country. And so I can tell you that one thing remains true. Black communities are regularly left out of the progressive movement. And this is to our own peril. You see, 2020 is coming, and the only path to victory for the progressive movement is to ensure that the new American majority is activated, engaged, but also to make sure that our votes are protected and counted. Now, every year I say the same thing, and every year I am disappointed but not surprised. Inside of our movement, black communities are often seen as window dressing. We look great in ads and brochures. Maybe there's a few of us in incredible organizations. But do our issues and our needs factor in to the agendas and the campaigns that we are moving? You see, for too long, our progressive movement has been Engaging black people, black communities, and our concerns, our dreams, symbolically, but not substantively. Frankly, for too long, progressives have even adopted conservative talking points when it comes to race, claiming that identity politics, a gift that was given to our communities by the insurmountable black lesbian feminist Barbara Smith, Identity politics, we say sometimes, are dividing us. And yet, if we're really being honest, what is truly dividing us is our inability to look squarely in the face at the impacts of white supremacy and an unfair, inhumane economic system, and then commit to ridding ourselves of that misery once and for all. My organization, the Black Futures Lab, conducted the Black Census. It is the largest survey of black communities in America in 154 years. Yeah, it's amazing. You can find the results at blackfutureslab.org. But before I tell you what we found, I want to tell you why we embarked on this project. You see, in the last election cycle in my home state of California, our state Democratic Party reportedly raised $30 million. 
but yet a mere $50,000 went to black voter engagement. You see, just like Black Lives Matter, everybody loves black women when it comes to elections. Just look at the victories that are attributed to us in Alabama and Virginia, Georgia and Florida. And yes, I'm claiming Georgia and Florida because we won those elections. It's just that voter fraud kept the winner from assuming office. So just like Black Lives Matter, we say that we love black communities, but how much of our resources are being directed towards investing in organizations and efforts that are mobilizing and activating black communities? You see, we embarked on this project because we want the concerns, the issues that are impacting black communities to be made much more visible. We embarked on this project because we've known for a long, a long time now that nobody is coming to save us. We embarked on this project because we know that the concerns of black communities deserve attention and our communities deserve to be powerful in the democracy that we are called upon to save time and time again because of the poor decisions that we make under white supremacy and patriarchy. Time and time again, black communities are engaged symbolically, but we are not engaged substantively. That means that candidates, campaigns, and at times even our own movement take shortcuts when it comes to black communities. And I'm here to tell you that we are suffering because of it. Thank you. <laughs> now, with respect to candidates and their campaigns, many of whom will be there this weekend, there are too many fried chicken photo ops and not enough town halls and kitchen table conversations with black voters who want to know not only what will you do to address our concerns, but how will you involve us in the process? And too many of us are providing cover for this kind of nonsense. I once name-checked a candidate for engaging in such pandering, and somebody responded to me incredulously, well, what else are campaigns supposed to do to engage African-American voters? I rest my case. What we found was that black communities are being impacted by the same issues that many in America are being impacted by but that the scale and the scope of that impact cuts deeper because of race, because of gender, because of sexuality. You know, those pesky identities we keep talking about are things that not only shape our lives, but also our life outcomes. You see, when you tell black people to stop talking about identity politics, you are also telling us that we should ignore the fact that the average life expectancy of a black trans woman is 35 years old, in a year when nearly 10 black trans women were murdered in just one month. When you tell black people to stop talking about identity politics, you are telling us to ignore the fact that white women make 81 cents to every dollar that a white man makes. But even still, black women are making 65 cents to that 81 cents. And that gap is often the difference between whether or not we can afford health care. When you tell us to stop talking about identity politics, you are telling us to ignore the fact that for a black family to send their child to a four-year college, we would have to make, on average, $10,000 more a year just to afford one year of college. In 2016, black people with a college degree had less wealth than a white person without one. So please, stop telling us to abandon identity politics and instead do the work to dismantle the disparities. In our survey, we found that the number one issue for the communities that we surveyed was that wages were too low to support a family. Nine in 10 respondents said that this was a major concern. 85% of Black Census Project respondents supported raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour in order to deal with that problem. 
86% of black census respondents said that the lack of affordable health care was a major problem. And 90% believe that it is the role of government to provide health care for all Americans. So my message for our movement is this. Instead of using us as window dressing, consider that black communities are the portal to the future and as a movement, we get to decide whether we are the canaries in the coal mine or whether we are unlocking together the future that we deserve. We found that black communities want the same things that most of America wants, safety, security, dignity, and yet we still cannot say with any level of certainty that America wants those things for black communities. We talked with more than 30,000 black people across this nation. Black folks who are liberal, conservative, black people who are rural and urban, black folks who are lesbian and gay, bisexual, transgender, gender nonconforming, cisgender and heterosexual. We talked to black people who are currently incarcerated and formerly incarcerated. We talked to black people who were born here and black people who migrated here to find a better life. And the most common thing that we heard from participants in our census was that no one has ever asked them what it is that we want for our futures. That does not bode well for a movement that plans to win in 2020, and in fact, that needs us in order to win. The 2020 election might be one of the most important elections of my lifetime of our lifetimes, because it may be the dividing line between the potential of democracy and the certainty of authoritarianism. It is an election that cannot be won by playing it safe or playing to the middle, because the current administration has stripped the middle of all meaning. It is an election that cannot be won by pretending that there is not a white supremacist and a rapist at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This election can only be won if no one is left behind, and democracy can only be realized if everyone gets to participate. So please, let us push our candidates, our campaigns, and even our movements to do more than take photos with black people. More is possible when we do better by all of us. Thank you.